the most important place to start is thinking about safety and and how a person how you need to feel safe you know like what is it that you need to feel safe in your life and if you're taking care of that then it's automatically going to dramatically improve your sleep and and and, and help you sleep better we have cortisol in our body. That's a, um, a hormone that is supposed to be highest in the morning to wake us up, to help us have the energy to get out of bed. And then as we go throughout, throughout our day, when we have a healthy system, the cortisol will decrease as melatonin is rising. And then cortisol should be rock bottom in the middle of the night while we're sleeping. And melatonin should be high. Melatonin is the hormone that tells our body that it's time to sleep and that it's time to wind down. Well, when when we have dysregulated cortisol and if we have it, uh, the body is, is basically burning cortisol for too long, then you'll get those surges of adrenaline so that your body can do the functions that it needs to when cortisol isn't able to, to, um, to do its job. And so one of the other things that's really important that people would probably not associate with sleep or with trauma is making sure that you're eating a balanced diet with balanced blood sugar levels because if you don't eat a balanced diet then what's going to happen is that you're going to have a blood sugar drop or a blood sugar spike in the middle of the night which is also going to cause those adrenaline surges it's really important to kind of take back the reins of what you're doing and and be more conscious about how you're eating. And snacking is not good. Ideally, what you wanna have is three good-sized meals per day that leave you feeling full, where you don't feel hungry in between meals and you don't need to snack. And so generally what that looks like is having enough protein, about a palm-sized amount of protein, so whatever your size and thickness of your palm, and then having a big, more than half of your plate filled with green leafy vegetables and then a little bit of um, carbs, uh, complex carbs. So again, that's the part that most people need to play with because some people need more complex carbohydrates, some people need need less, but if you eat and, and, and some healthy fat. So if you eat that way and you eat that way in a meal, then you should be able to easily feel full and satiated and get through to your next meal. And that's going to help with your mood. That's going to help with your energy levels. And that's really also going to help with your sleep so that you don't get those adrenaline surges in the middle of the night. So I was literally at a conference the other day and someone asked the question, what about those people who wake up in the middle of the night in panic? And of course the room was full of therapists. And so they're all thinking, oh, well, that person clearly has PTSD. And honestly, Susie, the first thing that came to my mind was blood sugar levels. <laughs> like, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and in addition to, to food, a lot of people who struggle with trauma or who are super stressed out lean on alcohol in order to relax them in the night. And that is such a no-no because it causes blood sugar surges in the middle of the night. First, you get relaxed and you and you feel tired and you fall asleep, but then inevitably the the liver and the the blood sugar will wake you up in the middle of the night in order to kind of uh, detoxify the alcohol content that's in your body. So, get not not choosing alcohol as a way to help yourself deal with the trauma or the stress that you're experiencing is another really important thing to do. Instead, you could replace it with a different kind of relaxing ritual. For example, taking a bath before bed, an Epsom salt bath is a fantastic choice because it's going to get magnesium into your body, which is really, really important for sleep. It's also going to, in the short term, increase your um, internal body temperature and then cool you down and, and having a drop in your body temperature is another way that your body gets cued that it's time to sleep. So a, a, a calming bath with um, maybe lavender essential oil and Epsom salts would be a fantastic alternative to that nightly glass of wine. When the immune system is hypervigilant, when we feel like we cannot stop because if we stop, and this might not be a conscious um, thought, but if we stop, then there will be a danger. If we stop, 
it's a threat to our life. Like that's what the the subconscious mi- subconscious mind and the nervous system thinks is that if we slow down, we will die. And so it's almost a, you know, and at least for me, it was a non-conscious and unconscious uh, way to just keep going. You know, the, the extra little bit of sugar at the end of the day was, oh, that means that I can just get a couple more things done and then everything might be a little bit better instead of actually having the um, the self-care, the awareness of self-care and the prioritization of that to be able to go, you know what? It's nighttime, it is dark outside. There's nothing beneficial that I am going to be able to accomplish for the rest of my day. So it's time to be done. It's time to let the day go and relax and put it all behind me and do something for myself. And I think that that's really, really difficult for a lot of people who are dealing with trauma. And it's again, one of the things that I absolutely love about the 21 day journey because it, it requires, you know, doing that, that journey, it requires you to do those things that you wouldn't normally prioritize for yourself because you just don't think that they're important, but that journey walks you through and kind of forces you to, to, to take that time and, and to reprioritize. It's the restful sleep when we can go into sleep feeling that all is well, I am safe, and so I can rest. It's a very different sleep than the exhausted rest of just falling asleep out of exhaustion. Yeah, collapsing. (laughs) Collapse. Yeah, and you know, I was listening to something the other day and it, it's interesting because biologically we are designed to sleep, however, Due to all of the insane chaos of our modern lives, it is not normal to sleep anymore. You actually have to work at sleep. And so even for someone who's not dealing with trauma, you have to consciously stop your life, put away the devices, turn off the lights, do all the things that you have to do to create an environment for sleep. And that's weird because it was never like that before we had all this technology. But now we have to consciously work at sleep. And so for someone who's dealing with trauma, that's that's doubly the case. Because not only do you have all these external stimuli that are telling you there's no reason that you need to sleep. You can keep doing whatever it is that you're doing because the lights are on and you know the the Wi-Fi is going. When you're dealing with someone, when someone has trauma, it's also their internal um system that's also saying you can't go to sleep you have to stay awake you you have to stay aware you've probably heard of sleep hygiene and sleep hygiene is kind of an umbrella term for all the things that we can actively do that we can actively control about uh how we approach sleep and i know because it's used so frequently it can be something that's easily dismissed oh yeah sleep hygiene whatever it doesn't really work when in reality, for at least 50% of the people who are struggling with sleep challenges, if they just really dialed in their sleep hygiene, their sleep would come back online and they would sleep through the night, no problem. So when we're talking about environment, we're talking about things like light, your exposure to light, I call it your light diet. So what type of light you're being exposed to at what types of times of day and making sure that you get early morning sunlight because that cues your body that it's time to wake up and it helps with that cortisol melatonin production cycle that I was talking about. And then also making sure that you're not exposed to uh, blue and green spectrums of, of light after sunset. And again, this is really tricky in our modern culture because if you're using normal light bulbs, they have mostly blue light coming out of them. If you're looking at screens, it's mostly blue light. So you really need to make a conscious choice to do something different. And so that might be changing out the light bulbs in your house, you know, making sure that they are dim at night using red light bulbs instead of the regular uh, compact compact fluorescence at night or using a type of circadian rhythm glasses if you're gonna need to be on your computer at night. Um, those are uh, things that can help with the light. Also making sure that you're the, the um, bedroom is super dark because you want it to be like you're sleeping in a cave 
And if you, if you're exposing your brain to, and your eyes and your skin to light at night, it's going to tell your, your brain that it should be awake in the middle of the night. And so, uh, those lights that are coming, um, that, that have that blue spectrum of light are telling your brain that it's high noon at any time of the day or the night. And then it sends your body into that hypervigilant state because it's supposed to be alert. So it's really um, counterproductive for someone who's trying to sleep well. If you're someone who is hypersensitive or who's dealing with trauma, I would definitely recommend that you get all of the electronics that you can out of your bedroom and try to sleep in a EMF mitigated sleep sanctuary and see how it is for you because not everyone is as sensitive to EMFs as, as some people are. But if you're dealing with trauma, it's definitely something that I would look at. And it really might be the difference between you feeling like you can get a good night's sleep and not.